learn how to make a Virgil Sanders hoodie today, why don't we? What you're going to need is you're going to need some black zippers, about four to six inches, a uh, black sweatshirt or hoodie sort of thing, uh, some fabric, purple fabric of the, the, the plaid, that's the word, plaid variety, some plain purple fabric, and some uh, white embroidery thread. Here's the process. Good morning, everyone. Let us begin. So it is 7 a.m. I've been up since 5-ish, getting my coffee and stuff like that. Uh, so anyway, um, I need to be able to use the stovetop prep now before my dad gets up and decides to make breakfast. So what we have here is half a yard of the fabric that I'm going to be dyeing. A big pot of water that we are bringing to a boy, and the two Rit Dye More uh, synthetic fabric dyes. I'm going to be using mostly royal purple, but then adding a little bit of super pink, just to make it kind of a magenta-y sort of color. It's very important that you use these because fleece and flannel and stuff like that, or any sort of polyester dye, it just won't work with a regular Rit because that's made for things like wool and uh, cotton, basically. Mostly those. So, according to these, you have to use the stovetop method. You can't do it in your washing machine. It doesn't get hot enough. So we're going to be boiling the water and then uh, continuing on. I'm gonna go watch an episode of Deep Space Nine while I'm waiting for this to start to boil. We are now at a boil. So, according to the directions, that's in French, Shake well before using. Wear rubber gloves. Fine. Do I have any rubber gloves? Ah, we do. With soothing aloe? Okay, so these are not food cutting gloves since I'm on stop. Shake well before using. Okay, that's good enough. Add dye mix well. Wet fabric to dye bath. Wet, wet, wet fabric. Add to dye bath. So uh, let's open these up. Quarter to half a bottle, that's about a third of a bottle. Because this is just very thick fabric, so it's going to absorb a lot. And then a little bit, a little splash of pink. <laughs> now what I'm hoping is that this Rit dye does not smell like musty ass, which is what the I think it's called eye dye or something. I'll put a little uh, picture of it here. Uh, I used the black to dye part of a cosplay and it still smells like dust and just disgustingness. So uh, don't use that if you want it to smell okay. But uh, we'll see. Into the bath. I'm gonna try and like make sure that it's not all clumped together because you gotta have like a good, oh yes, that's perfect color. You gotta, you gotta stir. You gotta stir constantly for 30 minutes or until color has, is, is Gucci. So uh, 30 minutes. And I read online that the first 10 minutes are the most crucial to stir to get an even mix, well even, even color distribution, which I definitely know about watching me dye my hair. So, um, yeah. I'm gonna bring you over here real quick to uh, show you what this color is looking like. Oh, hell yeah. So, uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stir just like a lot. Okay. And I'm using a silicone uh, spatula to stir. I've used this to dye stuff before, you could just wash it. Does my dad know that he uses this to cook and I've used it to dye fabric? Not yet. Wait, okay, this doesn't smell nearly as bad as the other one. It still has a similar smell, but I'm hoping that I can wash that out. Alright, I've been stirring this for 40 minutes, just to make sure. Uh, I'm gonna take this directly to the sink. Now we have to rinse this in cold water until Everything starts getting clear. Uh, my mom will not be happy at me showing that we have mess in our house. It is our house, but mess. Hello? Can you focus? Hello? Hello? 
Thank you. Cold water. Oh, I try not to touch the pot. It's very, very, very extremely hot. We're looking pretty good there. This is approximately the color that it is right now. Now according to the directions, wash in warm water with mild detergent. So I'm going to go put this in the wash. Very rare pictures where you can see Virgil's sleeve. And so uh, on the on, on his sleeves, uh, there are zippers. So I have two four inch black zippers. They they go from like my wrist down to kind of the middle of my forearm. So that should be a good approximate thing. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, Joan and Talon didn't do a cut and then like make this an actual zipper that would open up. So what's probably going to happen is just sewing along these edges and just straight sewing it down and cutting off the little these parts because as awesome as a job as they did I think it's just aesthetic. So I'm gonna start by putting on my jacket so I can know kind of where things are gonna end up. So I'm going to end up putting these zippers on the, uh, let's see, on, on this line area. So it's gonna be like that. That should work. So I'm going to do first is just cut off these little tops. They're, they're in the fucking way. Right, so I just, I sewed down, over, up, and then the little top parts so that way it doesn't run apart sort of thing. Making sure to keep this zipped the whole time. That's just how zipper insertion works. And that's one sleeve. There's also only like one other scene showing like the back, this part of the... arms. This arm, okay. You have to like flip everything backwards. But anyway, your right arm uh, has this around the base, so it has the cuff. So I'm going to cuff, and then it has purple all around. And then on this seam as well, it also has a zipper. Um, and, and I think the, the zipper also goes all the way like this. So what I'm going to end up doing is just taking some and sewing it around and then adding the zipper on top of that the same way that we did it. And don't worry about using like purple perfect thread. It's gonna be, you know, it's not gonna be noticed because we're going to eventually have the embroidery floss over all this stuff. Okay, from the, uh, the fitting in episode, you can see how far down the Purple goes and it goes from the, the collar, the, the wrist will do, basically down to the elbow. So that's just going to be like a, a plain circle pretty much. And um, if, if you look really close, you can tell like on the stuff that Thomas tweeted when Virgil's hoodie first um, was revealed, you can, you can tell that there are unfinished edges uh, on a lot of the stuff. Um, but you can see because of the way that uh, the, the, it's, it's threading, it's whatever you call it, uh, that they used just kind of a basic cotton type fabric. It, they're not using any of this uh, fleece, so either either way you don't have to hem it really well. Uh, you don't have to hem it at all for this, and they didn't hem it either. Got a rectangle that'll go from here to my elbow-ish, and enough to go around and then some just because this is a really so I've just basically used this seam 
to make sure that everything stays level. Gone all the way around once, and now since the part down here is bigger than the part up here, uh, at least on this jacket, here's might not. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I'm sorry that I'm not like actually showing you these. Uh, I have the opening on the seam where the zipper is going to be so we can hide that. I'm just going to go straight down and start going around so that way when I get back here there might be a triangle darting that I need to cut off or something like that and I can do that and you know, it'll be nice and not poofy. Good morning. We have a cat watching Jenna Marbles. And I have just finished going around the bottom of this. So basically I attempted to keep it kind of flat so I had to angle this part up, the bottom part, because the bottom part is bigger than the, the around the wrist. And so I have this part which is overlapping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it kind of like that, like you would if you were cutting a uh, darting. Um, which is basically where you make a little triangle and so you make a triangle and then you sew along here so that way you can then cut it off and it's smaller uh, it's smaller up here and bigger down there sort of thing or something like that uh, so cut that and then sew up that and then put on the uh, zipper as per usual and then we continue on doing the rest of the patches via a la whatever the pattern alrighty so I just finished sewing on basically all the patches uh, I didn't I didn't show all of it because it's literally just normal sewing so here's what you have you have the stuff all around here and the zipper obviously um, this is on the this is going to be on the right arm on the right side of the stomach you have this weird thing which uh, if you look at the d comparing two different uh, pictures kind of makes it out to look like a weird ghost cloud sort of thing um, where it does go in and has a part that does come up has a little all of this connects in one big piece uh, it, 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 yeah, it just it kind of looks like this. It goes under the arm and comes onto the back a bit. On the left pocket area, you have a little triangle. Let's see. On the left arm, on like on top of the arm, like near where all the seaming is. Uh, right here, right here is where uh, the seams meet of the sleeve and the body, the two parts of the body. You have kind of a peanut shape on top of the shoulder. And then on the other side of the arm is this, it's like a little elbow cover thing. And then as far as the hood goes, on your left ear, you are going to be having this circly thing. I had to look at pictures that Thomas posted, carefully look at some screenshots from um, um, the Moving On duology, uh, and some like blueprints for Anxiety's thing, and then there's also a triangle on your right ear. In the one of the things I found, uh, these were switched. Um, but yeah, it's it's the circle over or the ovaloid on the left ear, the square on the right ear. Move on to the inside of the hood. The inside of the hood has a purple fabric that is let's get in better light. Um, that is a more blue, uh, purple compared to the slightly more red purple of the thing. Um. Hard to see it in the real light. Uh, this is some fabric that was white that I just dyed um, for 30 minutes using just straight royal purple dye instead of adding some of the pink. What we're going to do first is line up where the hood meets the rest of it with uh, 
with the fabric. So that way the wrong side is facing up. We're gonna sew inside of the hood like this. We sew it here so that way when we pull it back it, uh, it's, 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 it's stable. Basically this is what's going on. So this is the side that's gonna be against your head. This is the inside of the hood. You can see I just flipped it inside out. Put the two sides together with the majority of the fabric down towards the body because what you do is you sew it. I'm sewing it along this line and then you flip it up and wow, there's no, there's no black thread. And also there is some, uh, d a good portion of the outside part of Virgil's jacket um, hood that is black because uh, they didn't want to sew the strap in, so the, um, there's the little the sleeve area for this string to be in. And so I'm just going, going to be uh, going around that, um, so it's going to have, it's gonna, there's a line here, I promise, yeah, there's a little line of stuff. So we basically just do that and I'll be back. This lovely all done. And now I've just, so it was like this when I was sewing it, put back over. And what I'm doing, so I don't have like a lot of stitching here. So what I'm doing is a ladder stitch uh, on this, basically with the purple fabric going through, but not going, only going through the purple fabric in a little stitch. And then over onto the next side, I'm just in the side of the hoodie right next to it, going through the entire hoodie here, so that way it'll kind of curl in very close to each other. It's taking me a minute to get it. Just been going around doing the ladder stitch. Um, my fabric doesn't quite go all the way to the edge on some parts of it when you flip it inside out but so i'm folding it in so that way it's not being stretched and i'm going to continue doing that um, just continue on with the blanket stitch so if, if if it seems like your fabric isn't going all the way like to the edges if you have it flipped inside out try putting it in con cave style, not convex. Yes. I remember trigonometry, I think. Uh, I mean, this is the way that you're going to be using it anyway, uh, if you're going to be doing that, so... I don't know the... D d d I wasn't good at geometry, but it, it does good stuff. Okay. Alright, so I just finished going all the way around, and I just uh, looped it together down here. And so what you have, because I was using a rectangular piece of fabric, is you're going to have this flop. So basically what you're going to then want to do is just push it to the end, like push it up, see where it lines up, uh, cut it close along here and then do another blanket stitch, or, or ladder stitch I mean, or you can just sew it and then cut it. I'm going to do the uh, ladder stitch version. Whoa. Oh, I know it was going to be so good, but it got tangled. Here we go. Behold, it is the humble embroidery needle. Notice how big the eyelet is. It's a lot more oblong. Let me just let me let me put it next to the the other regular sewing needle for comparison. This is just a standard sharp that I was using earlier. Look at the difference. So this is what we're going to be using with the embroidery floss because you can't get embroidery floss through that tiny eyelet. You can only get it through this type of thing. So this is what we're going to be using to put in the stitching. As you can see, the uh, embroidery needle is perfect for the... Why did that turn... whatever. It's perfect for the embroidery floss. 
So basically what you are going to be doing is just, you know, looking at pictures of Virgil's sweater and uh, going around where the stitching is. Uh, just like down and up and down and up. Occasionally there's a crisscross and like do whatever you want. Joan and Talon both embroidered their names into Virgil's actual sweater. Um, and I will show you where where most of the stitching is after I do it myself. Welcome. It's very dark in here because uh, it's uh, 7.45 a.m. winter. Uh, I'm at urgent care just uh, seeing if my belly button piercing is infected or not. Uh, but uh, I've got about 10 minutes before urgent care actually opens, so I want to show you something chill. Uh, so when you're doing X's, a nice thing to do, um, so that way it kind of locks into place. So you have your, your ones. So what you do, so you have whatever stitch you're having before it. I'm just going to do one that's straight down and then go far over to, you know, whatever direction at the top. And then you're going to go what? down to the opposite bottom side and then up to where you want the other top to be and only I poked myself and then before you pull it and do the other side go underneath the extra piece of string so you have top to bottom create the little loop go through that go underneath that before going back down to here. And so it basically just kind of locks it into place. So this part is underneath the top and it, it makes it nice and snug and secure. So that's a pro tip for ya. Pro tip. tip. Um, do the stitching before you, you do this. I forgot about the things in the head, but it's good that I did a blanket stitch around and there's, there's, there's basically just air in between here. These aren't connected. So uh, just be careful. Um, do as I say, not as I do. So the stitching goes on the left shoulder, on top of here, around this, around this, and then like some lines on both of these, on this, and it goes back like that. And on this, but not here, because this is a pocket and that kind of isn't how pockets work. And then, finally, you have Virgil's logo. I printed it out on t-shirt transfer paper. Um, if you're going to do that, remember to reverse the image before you print it out. Um, I use dark t-shirt print paper. I have trouble peeling a lot of them, though, so do your research and find a good one. Otherwise, you can also uh, purchase a pin or patch from Thomas Sanders directly, or you can paint it on yourself if you have talent. But anyway, this is how to make a Virgil hoodie. This is going to be my main hoodie for the entirety of the rest of forever. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.